All right. Part two of the Jason Coffin build. Or it's not even Jason Coffin build. It's just a coffin build. But Jason looks really cool in there. <laughs> so, you know, we've got the pieces assembled from the first part of the video. And if you haven't watched that already, I'll put a banner in the uh, upper right corner of this video so that you can click on it and watch part one to get caught up to speed. But here is part two. And we've got the pieces cut. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the stick method that I use to texture everything to make it look like... Uh, real wood and you know i'm going through and just adding some puck marks after i drag the stick across the foam and create the lines uh, that give it the wood grain texture i just go through and make individual little puck marks and smash it and you know poke it and peel it and whatever i think is going to distress it uh you know nicely and then i also take uh i don't think i did it right here i did it later on in the video but i'll take the very tip of the exacto knife and i'll lightly drag it across there and create crevices uh that make it uh add a real nice final touch to that but you know i'm doing the side pieces here making sure to go you know in the direction of the grain the wood would be uh going we don't want to go up and down on the sides when the wood is going you know horizontal <laughs> that would look pretty bad uh make sure to get the end pieces here because these are the tops and bottoms uh, of the head and the foot so when you open the coffin you're going to see the edge of these directly on you know the tops of them so you want to make sure that you you know bring the texture uh up on the top and the bottom and here on the sides of the coffin lid uh because you're gonna these these parts are going to be visible you know and you want to make sure that you know you didn't miss any of this because <laughs> it would look kind of funky if you did everything and you know and you forgot to do one side <laughs> now i'm just kind of rough fitting here making sure you know the sides are flexible enough uh, and long enough and because i'm going to go ahead and start gluing these pieces together this is a bit tricky because uh those side pieces have to be thin enough to bend to the shape of the coffin um and you know and long enough to fit but the tricky part is when i have to glue them i would love to be able to hot glue them because that would save me so much time but you can't because it's so thin that it will melt the hot glue will melt through there uh and either deform it or leave holes in there how do i know because i've done it <laughs> a couple of years ago when i built another coffin but um the cool thing about using the pins here is that if you push them in all the way and you let it dry overnight, it creates little uh, indentations like, you know, rivets or nail holes. It's really pretty a cool effect at the end. Uh, if I remember, I'll try to show you, but you'll see it. But it's just right here. It just takes a lot of glue, um, you know, and a lot of pins. And I don't want heavy beads of glue uh, in there, even though it's going to be covered. I just... I don't want big heavy beads of, of glue because it takes longer to dry. So I'll just thin it out with a brush here. Uh, and, you know, and that's what I do on the inside. I'll just drag it back and, and thin it out a little bit so that it, it you know, helps the, the dry time improve. Now, later after this dries on the inside, I can go back through and reinforce it with uh, a hot glue uh, or additional pieces of foam in there uh, because you know it's not really that supported it's thin foam you can see by looking at it it's thin foam on the sides and you don't really want to tear it and if the only part that's securing that foam to the coffin is the bottom glue line then then you know how long will it last with you putting a figure and stuff in there uh, so i do later reinforce the inside with uh hot glue but i do it as the temperature of the glue gun is just warming up so that it's not full you know full on you know heat from the glue uh and and that helps but anyway um right here i'm creating some pieces for the uh lid the inset of the lid so when you push the lid down onto Jason, it just doesn't go all the way down into the coffin. Uh, there's something that it can, you know, stop against. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm creating the pieces for the uh, head and the foot. And and I'll hot glue those in because they're a bit thicker than the sides of the coffin. So I can get away with some hot glue uh, on those. You can see there's a, you know, definitely uh, thicker thicker piece of foam and we're just like i say i keep rough fitting everything and putting it together because i want to be sure that everything is 
you know, fitting together. And there is a little bit of a gap right there on the side and that bugs me. Um, so we'll do a little light sanding with an emery board and knock the very edges of the coffin down right there so that there's not such a sharp point poking out on the foam and hopefully that brings the sides in a little bit more uh i'll shave and file down there at the bottom some of the uh end of the coffin so that it fits a little more nice and square in there it's foam so it's flexible and you know like i said before it's pretty forgiving so you can file it and sand it and you know and and definitely uh when you're putting this together you know fine tune it i flip the lid over to see if i get a better fit that way and that gap uh you know shrinks a little bit but it doesn't so i've got a fix for that no worry we're going to do the rest of the lid uh inset here um the lip and this is going to what this is going to do it's really going to do two things hopefully three it's going to create an inset for the lid so that it has a stop and it won't go all the way down but it will also strengthen that flimsy wall because i mean that thing is thin and and when you put the lid in and take it out you know i'm going to be you know holding it and pulling against it because the lid fits tight in there so it's going to strengthen the top of the wall and it's going to also prevent the lid from going all the way down into the coffin and hopefully it's going to create another layer of thickness so that that gap that you see is um, not going to be staring straight down into the coffin but you'll be but it will be uh you know there'll be some liner there and and it, it'll help uh you know decrease that gap some uh so that's why i keep fitting everything back together and 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 checking it all out and making sure that it all fits right it's still a little bit of a gap there but i've got a fix for that later you're gonna you're gonna see see right there i'm like ah, i don't like this gap part of that too is from the fact that i need to build a jig for the stinking proxon cutter and i've been lazy <laughs> uh, a jig would give me a more consistent slice uh on the foam and not have some of those wavies in there what i'm doing is i'm going to take a piece of foam and I'm just going to, the length of the gap, I'm going to trim a piece of foam that is the same thickness, but that is the same length of the gap. And I'm just going to shape it to that edge <laughs> and, you know, uh, put it on there. It fits about the area of the gap that I need, about the thickness of the gap that I need. I'm going to do a little final trim uh, on that piece and then i'm going to glue it on there and sand it down and texture it so that it looks like you know another piece of wood and uh and it works you know that's one of the great things about uh the foam you can get away with so much <laughs> good thing i'm not a i don't build houses right be in bad shape <laughs> but uh it, it you'll see it, it does work and you know it's hard to get a really perfect exact fit because this stuff moves and deforms a little bit and the heat gun you know makes it uh change shape a little bit and you know so that's why all this fine tuning and all this you know stuff is important the sanding and the and you know the glue and the right kind of glue it all makes a difference because uh i want it even though it's going to be a wooden coffin and it's going to be distressed and yeah you could get away with some holes here and there but i if i didn't intend on the holes and the gaps being there i don't want them to be there uh you know if i can come up with a way to fix it so that there's not a big gap there then that's what i want to do because it's not my intention that the gap was was there um but this is a cool trick to make it work and we're just you know not hot glue this because it is thicker than the rest of the uh it's not like the coffin sides where it's it's thin so i can get this on here uh press it onto there and don't use a lot and put it on there quick because that spreads and then it can also as it cools it will harden a little bit and by the time you put it on there it will leave a gap between where you uh put the two pieces of foam together and create this uh unevenness and, and i don't want that so now that it's on there and it's dry uh that's the beautiful thing about hot glue it dries so fast uh, then i'm going to just sand it down and make sure that it's level pretend that thing in my hand is like a planer <laughs> you know or a belt sander we're just knocking that edge down and uh making sure everything is level and 
at the end of the day, you cannot tell that I, I did this. I mean, you might be able to look at the, the video and then look at a coffin in a, my, you know, coffin in one of my photos and be like, oh, yeah, I see that. But that's only because you're seeing the video. <laughs> so, you know, it's pretty cool to uh, have to come up with some of the some of the fun in this is coming up with ways to fix problems you might run into uh along the way and and this is one of those instances where you know i had to kind of come up with an idea of how to fix this like i say because i did not want the gap there and so this is just part of the fun and part of the different you know little obstacles that come up that you have to kind of navigate around and this is a this worked out really well i'm happy with the way that this took in some of the gap and like i say this could have been avoided had i had a more even cut on the piece of on the side railing foam but since i didn't have a jig built for the the uh proxon cutter i i do get a little bit of waviness in there and you know uh and and so i'm i'm really gonna you know build a jig i think i'm gonna do that today i'm gonna go to home depot and buy some wood uh now there was a little piece right there that the hot glue didn't catch so i add a little a little bit to the razor blade there and i slid it in there with the hot glue and then um that puts them in that tight spot and i'm holding it together with my hand uh and so that uh, helped glue it the rest of the way now i need a little coffee because that was work <laughs> anyway uh so you can see that the top you know the piece that i just added it looks like all out of shape and like it's not supposed to be there so we're going to taper the edge we're going to you know just run the emery board across this and shape it feather that edge down so that it's got a nice edge to it and it blends into the old uh not old wood <laughs> but into the the foam that's already there uh and we're just going to lightly shape it and, and, and just work with it a little bit. Doing this does create dust. So if you have, uh, you know, things around or out or exposed that aren't covered that you don't want foam dust on, then cover them up. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to get a, I'm going to break the, make a fresh break in this shim to create some texture for this single piece. And I'm just going to use the edge and I'm going to drag it across there and texture it so that ultimately it's going to, uh, you know, look like a piece of coffin wood. And I do, uh, and I will knock that back in down too later um, so that it doesn't uh, come out so abruptly right there and look like an out of place piece of wood that somebody added after the fact, which is exactly what I did. <laughs> but that's the awesome part of foam man it just it, you can really work with it and and it's really uh you can definitely fix mistakes and see there i gotta knock that down because that looks ridiculous <laughs> who built this coffin <laughs> it's the last time we used this guy <laughs> uh, it's one of those coffins you get from wish <laughs> don't buy your coffins from wish Anyway, um, we're going to fit it in there. And you can see, see that piece in the side rail of foam that it's like uh, a big divot in there. That's because <laughs> I didn't build a jig. And and I really haven't felt uh, compelled to build one, but I need to now because I can definitely see it, it created me a lot more work, uh, you know, not having an even cut right there for that side piece. And so I'm having to go through all this trauma. <laughs> but it's okay. It gives a, a good example for me to share on how to, you know, fix some of this stuff. And so, and once we paint this and, but that did, that did close the gap up a little bit uh, and helped. So once we paint this and put the extra trim and stuff on here, like I'm going to do, you're not really going to see that. It's not going to be a big deal. And, um, so we did close it up and now, you know, I've got some pictures there that I printed out on the internet that I, I really liked. Um, as far as, you know, like what goes on the outsides of some of these coffins and some of this old crooked slanted wood, uh, you know, looked awesome. I did like the chain that you see up there on the picture, but I didn't want to put a chain on there because then the coffin is going to be closed. But when I slice these pieces to go on the top, keep in mind, these things are really the thickness of this piece really helps make it believable. Don't make them too thick, you know. Um, thin uh and then you know lightly texture them with the wood 
uh, or not lightly texture them, but lightly drag the stick across them multiple times to create good texture in them. But they're really thin pieces. Don't make them too thick. Uh, like I say, if if they're really thick, it's, it's going to look not. It's just not going to look right. And so, and they don't have to be perfectly straight, you know. And uh, as you can see here, one has a little bit of a taper on it. The other one, you know, I mean, they're they're cut a little crooked, and that's okay. I'm not really going for precision. I'm just going for, you know, pieces of wood. And I'm doing the side pieces. Uh, if I've got four pieces of wood on top, I need four pieces of wood on this on each side. So um, that's what I'm doing. At, and I'm texturing. <laughs> got to texture each piece now, too. So you can see it, how thin that is. And it really is. Um, th there's a lot of little steps in making this coffin uh, if you want it to look, you know, good. But, you know, those steps pay off in the end because we got a really nice looking coffin that I'm, I'm really happy with. And uh, it is a little more work than a stone coffin. That stone coffin I built a couple years ago, uh, it's just, you know, easy. You just roll your ball of foil across all the sides of it and it looks like stone. <laughs> it's not, you know, and it can be thicker. Uh, you know, it's thicker walled and, you know, the everything is a little bit thicker on it because it was uh, a stone coffin built and um so the wood definitely has to be thinner and definitely is a lot more involved as far as the texturing part of it goes um but both coffins you know produce or both methods produce a really cool looking coffin and and uh and i'm happy with it i i don't mind spending the time on doing it because i know in the end it's going to look nice and something that i can share and more importantly it's something i can photograph and it look really well um and because at the end of the day that's you know what i do i photograph the <laughs> these toys and uh um you know i want them to be placed in sets that look nice uh you know and be happy with it so now comes the other fun part of, of gluing it but this isn't too bad because this just goes right on top and then I cleaned some of the edge of it up with a stick. Uh, I don't want those beads of white glue poking out. Um, I can want to prevent that as much as possible. So I just drag the stick across there and then uh, we're going to paint over that. So you're not really going to see it. You can see the coffin. I just painted it black. So you're not going to see that stuff. Now for the coffin liner, just an old t-shirt. A couple ways you can do this. Um, and I was not... Uh, I was in more of a hurry than I wanted to be for that. I Ultimately, I would have dunked it in some coffee and let it set and then wring it out and let it dry. But, uh, you know, I didn't want to go that route because I was impatient. <laughs> but I do airbrush it. Uh, here, I use the hot glue, but I don't put the hot glue on the coffin and then put the shirt inside, the coffin liner inside because the foam the coffin uh, or the glue will melt the coffin it will melt the foam so i put it onto the shirt and then i put it into the coffin um you know here on the sides the glue is actually going on that coffin uh lid inset lip so it's okay it's not going onto the thin wall where it would melt through but um you can see I just roll this, you know, liner into there and, and, and tuck the edges in and, and peel away any little bits of glue that are going to be visible. And we've got a cool coffin that we've taken from pink foam. We've cut it. We've measured, cut, assembled, textured. And that's where we're at so far. Jason fits in there really nicely. Uh, stay tuned for another video, the final video, uh, on where I dry brush, paint it, and add a little more, a little more decorative stuff to it. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. You should be doing that. I appreciate it. Follow me on all the platforms, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Take care, friends.